Hey guys, this is part 2 of Cambridge IGCSE Biology, February March 2020, paper 4. Question 4, part A. Describe the similarities and differences between marismas and quashiorcore. Well, both are similar in the sense that they're both types of malnutrition and it's caused by a certain deficiency such as protein and they primarily affect children. So you'd have seen a lot of photos of these children suffering from marasmus and quashiorcore. And the symptoms are very similar as well. So firstly, we've got diarrhea, poor growth, dry skin, anemia, and all that. But there are differences, and one of the differences is that people suffering from marasmus are also deficient in other nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, but for quasher core, it's because they're deficient of protein only, and due to that, the symptoms of quasher core include swelling of body parts such as your belly area, and that gives us two marks from differences. Part B. Researchers at the hospital recorded the total number of children admitted to the hospital between 1984 and 2002. A common reason for children being admitted to this hospital was severe diarrhea. Table 4.1 shows this information. Calculate the percentage decrease in the total number of children admitted to the hospital between 1998 and 2002. Give your answer to the nearest whole number. In 1998, there were 1,419 children, and in 2002, there were 1,161 children admitted to the hospital. So to find the percentage decrease, you find the difference between those two numbers and divide it with the initial value, which is 1419 and times 100. You get 18.1818 and so on, but it's just nearest whole number, so you can put it as 18%. Health workers in the communities near the hospital were trained in the prevention and treatment of diarrhea. This affected the total number of children being admitted to the hospital. Suggest the year in which the training took place. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, if you have these health workers trained about the prevention and treatment, there will be less number of children affected by it. So you can really just suggest any year between 1990 and 1994, and also 2000 or 2002, because you see a decrease in total number of children admitted, and also another decrease from 2000 to 2002. But you cannot say 1996 or 1998 because the numbers have increased or have not changed at all. I'll just put it as 1992, somewhere in the middle. And the reason is that the number of children admitted to the hospital decreases after this year. The health workers provided advice to the community on ways of preventing the spread of the pathogens that cause diarrhea. Suggest the advice that was given to the community. Okay, I'm sure you guys are familiar to this. Like, very familiar, you know, spread of the pathogens, spread of the disease or the virus. Firstly, you gotta wash your hands or use hand sanitizers. Then, personal hygiene, of course. Use clean equipment when cooking or in daily lives. Use clean water. And if there are any infected individuals, you isolate them and monitor them. And also try to identify them from the community to prevent further spread of the disease. I'm sure you guys will be able to write more than three points for this question. Well, they don't have wearing a mask in the mark scheme, this being diarrhea, but the rest are quite easy to guess. Question 5, Part A. Mitosis is a type of nuclear division. Figure 5.1 is a series of photomicrographs showing a cell dividing by mitosis. Before mitosis, this kind of looks like an avocado. Anyway, state the change that has occurred to the mass of DNA immediately before mitosis in Figure 5.1. So what happened right before this? Well, you can't really figure this out from the diagram itself. You just need to know it. Well, right before mitosis, the DNA will double. Or you can also say it just increases, but it actually doubles to be ready when cells are divided later on. 
Estimate the time when the chromosomes shown in figure 5.1 begin to separate. Okay, you can get this question right even if you don't know what's going on. So when do you think it begins to separate? Like for this 45 minutes, it's already separated. This is also already separated. And there's nothing going on at 0 minutes. I mean, something's going on, but it doesn't seem like it's going to separate. Well, from 34 minutes to 40 minutes, you can say that it begins to separate between the time because separation started occurring at 40 minutes. So you can just write any figure between 34 to 39. I'll just write 35 minutes. Part B. Meiosis is another type of nuclear division. Describe how the nuclein cells produced by meiosis differ from the nuclein cells produced by mitosis. Yeah, they're very different, and this is a very popular question. You need to memorize this. Okay, so for meiosis, the cells produced are genetically different from each other and the parent cells. It's not like mitosis where the cells are identical to the parent cells. And also for meiosis, they produce haploid nuclei compared to the diploid nuclei produced by mitosis because the cells go through reduction division during meiosis where the chromosome numbers are being halved. Part C. Stem cells divide by mitosis during the growth of an embryo. Describe the role of stem cells in the growth of an embryo. Well, do not get confused. They started by talking about mitosis and the previous question was about mitosis. So you might think that it's something related to the process of mitosis, but no, you have to talk about what the stem cell does. There isn't really much to talk about actually. So the stem cells are unspecialized cells. They don't have any specific function to carry out in your body yet but they have the potential to become specialized, such as forming cells in your heart, or maybe your lungs, or maybe your muscles. They're there so that as the embryo grows, they can be developed into cells with specific functions. Part D. An embryo develops into a fetus. Outline the processes of labor and birth. Ah, we have this huge space given for us. But really, don't worry, you just think of this as a story and just state what happens after the next, the next, next, and the baby is born. Okay, so first, there will be the breaking of the amniotic sac. Well, you gotta let the baby come out through the amniotic sac. And then the amniotic fluid will be released and the muscles in the uterus wall will start contracting. So it pushes out the baby and the cervix of the mother will dilate to make space for the baby to come out and the baby will be pulled out through the vagina by the doctors. I'm not sure if the pull out is the right term, but anyway, the baby is born. Okay, but before that, you have to cut the umbilical cord to detach from the mother's womb and the baby is born. And after that, lastly, there will be delivery of the afterbirth or the placenta. It's where the baby stayed before being born, and that will be released outside as well. Question 6 Part A Atlantic cod gathers more white, a type of fish that is an important resource for commercial fishing. Figure 6.1 shows the estimated mass of Atlantic cod over 40 years. So it's like decreasing and increased and decreased and increased a bit. In 1970, the mass of Atlantic coal was 8 million tons. Stay one year when the mass of Atlantic coal was half this value. So half of 8 million, it's when it's 4 million. Just draw a straight line. Okay, then see where it intersects the graph. There are many points. And in the mark scheme, there are actually quite a few options. So just choose one of them. I'll just go with 2007. State the years when there was a continuous increase in the mass of Atlantic coal for at least five years. Alright, just look at the graph and see where it's increasing for a long time. It's kind of obvious. It's here. So you can just pick any point. Maybe you can just say from 1976 until 1981 because that's clearly in this range. So just reasons for the trend shown between 1990 and 1995. 
What happened between 1990 and 1995? It's one of the biggest decrease in this diagram, and we have to suggest why it decreased. There can be many, many answers. Just use your imagination. Say something like there is an increased predation. So a lot of them were just hunted by their predators. Maybe reduction in food supply they didn't have enough smaller fish to feed on. Or maybe since they're famous for commercial fishing, there could have been overfishing and then some natural disasters. All of them can be the answer. Explain how fish stocks can be conserved by restocking. Restocking is basically like take some fish from the sea and breed them in your own house. Okay, not house, but laboratories or something. And then you release them back into the sea. And this is called the captive breeding program. So through the program, you give them good food, provide good shelters. So they're going to multiply very quickly. So you just capture them again and release them back into where they came from. Okay, then after that, you don't just leave the place. You have to protect the area, tell people not to fish in that place. And you monitor how the fish are doing. You count their population and just keep a watch on them. Part B. Fish have adaptive features that enable them to live successfully in their environment. Figure 6.2 is a photograph of a great white shark, Carcharida carcharis. Great white sharks are efficient predators and have very good eyesight to see in poor light conditions underwater. Describe two features other than eyesight visible in figure 6.2 that suggest that great white sharks are efficient predators. Well, it has a cute face. I'm just kidding. You see that it has lots of teeth, good for chewing on smaller fish, and big jaws so you can swallow anything. And their body shape is streamlined, making them really fast under the water. And you can also see that they have this, some patterns or the shades on their body so they can be easily camouflaged among the sea plants or the corals and so on. Describe how the ancestors of the great white shark develop adaptive features such as good eyesight. If you see the word ancestor or something that reminds you of a gene or a trait being passed down for hundreds or thousands of years and how that helped to develop certain adaptive feature, then you have to think about natural selection because you don't suddenly get some incredible feature to help you to live your life. These things have went through natural selection for thousands of years and that's how you get these adaptive features. And now I just explain what natural selection is. I think this question comes out almost every year. You must know this because they're just the same pattern. You just need to apply to the question. So firstly, there is variation in eyesight. All the sharks are born with different eyesights. There could have been mutations, so some of them were suddenly born with a good eyesight. And these new alleles will help the shark to start hunting better than the other sharks with less capable eyesight. There are higher chances of you passing on the alleles to the offspring. And eventually, because of the offspring and caber producing and surviving, all the organisms will start having good eyesight. That's how the whole population can end up having a really good eyesight. That's the end of this paper. Has this video helped you guys? If so, please like and leave a comment to tell me about it. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye.